Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson's Small Engines. This is going to be almost like the last one, but different. This is a Troy Belt Snow Thrower. This is a Storm 2410. This is actually going to be on removing the carburetor on the old style engine. So this engine is a little bit different than the newer style engine. And it doesn't have the nice features of the new style to, to get everything apart. So it's a little more involved than the other one. But I just want to show you how I take the carburetor off of the uh, engine. And I want to show you the tools right now. We have the normal tools that I normally use on carburetor repair. And this one here, I'm going to use the, uh, the electric Phillips head um, ratchet or screwdriver here. We have ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket on there. You can just use your own 10 millimeter wrench or socket to work. Uh, a couple different, um, I love these things. I tell you guys that all the time. The, the fender clip tools I use for taking the, a whole bunch of stuff off. We got a couple different pliers and two vice grips. One's for taking off the, the knob and one's for the fuel shut off. And then we have a uh, ratcheting 10 millimeter I like to use on one of the bolts that's pretty easy to work. So that's the first thing we gotta do is come over here and I'm gonna take, take our knob off the engine. This guy here is a, it can be a little tricky. And like I said in the past, I, we used to do it differently, but if you pull on this hard enough, that will come off. Now be real careful. Try not to mess it up for my customer here. I'm just gonna put a rag around it and then you just really have to really wiggle and pull and don't, and it'll come off, all right? But you really have to yank on that pretty hard. And just remember when you put it together, let me just get this knob in my hand here. When you put it together, just remember that you have like, it's a little puzzle. There's a little U shaped on that and it has to go up inside here, all right? So just make sure when you put it back up inside there, it's going the correct way. All right, I always remember too is that hole, the square hole on top goes up, all right? So that's off. Then we have to get this knob off here and I use my clip tools. So these are two tools here. And you gotta kind of pry this out a little bit. Sometimes you can get in there, you gotta be careful you don't break them. And this is gonna get a little tricky here. All right, and just gotta be careful you don't break them. And you can just use a pair of screwdrivers if you have them. You just gotta make sure that when it pops off, you're not gonna break it. Okay, I try to pry evenly and it does come off. That's right, so now your 10 millimeter wrench. And we are going to start, actually I want to start by taking off this little outer bracket here. Move this up out of the way. And I just get this up, I wrap it around. You guys can do whatever you want with it. I'm just getting this out of my way so it doesn't interfere with me taking this piece off here. It's a Phillips head screwdriver. You can take off just the lower one, but I'm going to take off the entire, that is the, uh, the electric starter plug. I'm going to take it off so we can get to the back of that. You don't have to take off the whole thing. You can just take off the bottom. And what we're trying to do is I'm trying to get this out of the way. All right, so that the, the bottom one is the one I, I could take off. But just to show you guys, you can just take the, just drop this down. And then we have a 10 millimeter bolt here. And this is where the ratcheting wrench comes in real nice and handy. Just make sure you don't lose your parts. And we have two here, and we do have a couple here. Sometimes I leave them on. I'm trying to make it easier to get these apart. And if you guys can hear the rain coming down on my metal roof, I'm not sure if that's gonna interfere with this or not, but it's coming down pretty good right now. We're supposed to get some snow in the next few days. Okay, now this one is almost accessible with my socket. Might be able to get it with the wrench. 
and I may not have to take this one off. Oh, this one's tight. Need a a long longer wrench for better leverage. Yeah, this one's a little tight. We're gonna leave that one alone for now and see how this this might be able to come up. All right, so I'm able to pull this up off of here. You just have to be careful. When you put it back together again, everything's gotta line up. All right, so that's the way it was. And then you bring it up out of there, just push it off to the side. Shouldn't hinder how that comes off. Now, the only thing that's holding this on right now is these two nuts here. And at this point, I come around to here, we take the uh, spark plug wire off the spark plug, get that out of the way. And then I try to take off this little clip here. You need a pair of pliers. Let me just... You move up out of the way. And if you have a fender clip tool, push this off. Cause it's gonna make this hose is connected to the back side of the carburetor if you take this off now it's gonna make it a little bit easier to come off and you have to try to kind of get this clip out of the way and off sometimes i can leave it on there i'm just going to take it off this time and it's 10 millimeter two nuts right here just kind of peel everything away and just kind of wiggle and jiggle and pry it now you're gonna have to deal with primer line which is up here it's gonna be connected down here to the carburetor and again I use my fender clip tool and I'm just gonna pop that up off out of the way now this guy came in here with a really bad flooded engine of gasoline because the carburetor let loose and it flooded the motor. I can already smell the gas. All right, now, right now we have, this is the cable for your on and off switch right here, which comes up and it goes underneath here and through here. Now you, you don't have to necessarily take all this off, but you gotta make sure when you put it back together, everything goes back in like this tube here it's got to go back in through the hole back there, which is going to really be hard to see. Um, but it's got to go through this hole back in up in here. All right. And you just have to make sure that this gets pushed back up in there. So just keep this video in handy because you're probably going to have to look back on it many times. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this off and move it out to the side. And maybe because now we have this in the way here. Normally, I can just move these out of the way. This one may not quite make it. Yeah, we're going to have to, I thought we could move this out of the way. It looks like we're going to have to go and pull the switch out here and see if we can, it's going to be a little tricky. All right, so if you can't get that out of your way, then you're going to have to take off this right here. It's not a real big deal. We're just trying to make it one less step. This is, this is just the top to the carburetor, it's just a cap. There is no air filters on these carburetors. Because technically there's no dust when it snows. So remember these bolts, these are long and this cap. Now, once this comes apart here, remember how it goes because then you have to get your fissure line behind it. All right, this is just the top of the cap there. Then this will come out of your way and you don't have to disconnect the electrical. You can just leave it alone. Now we're to the carburetor, and like I've said in the past, it's always good to put new gaskets on these guys in a pinch. If they're not broken, you can probably use them again. You gotta remember where all this goes here, right? I try to keep this all together when I take it off, and just up, you now look up here, and up, and pull it out of the top. It'll come, all right? And then I put that over on the bench. Carburetors sometimes can be stuck, but this one actually was not. 
This is when you need your vice grip. A pair of needle nose vice grips. Don't have them too closed. If you have them too closed, you can really pinch this too too hard. You just want to make sure you have it just just enough that it doesn't smash it too hard, but enough that it keeps the fuel line the fuel from dripping out of there. And then you need a pair of pliers to get this guy, this clamp off here. All right, pull that around. I had a pair of pliers. <laughs> Move this guy out of the way. And my fender clip tool for getting the fuel line off. Nice and easy on that. You'll have a little bit of drippage there, most likely. I drained the fuel tank before I did this. Pair of needle nose pliers. Be real careful with the spring, it can bend up and out. Pull your carb out a little bit until the top lines up with the rod here and it should pop right up and out just like that and there you have it this is the older style engine this guy needs a new carburetor even though the carburetor doesn't look that bad if you can use these gaskets uh, then so be it but this internal has let loose and we're gonna replace this carburetor appreciate everybody watching my videos if you have any comments, please leave them below. Please subscribe, and thanks for watching.